Recently, Hyundai has completed its acquisition of Boston Dynamics, which developed Internet's one of the most admired dancing sport robots. Boston Dynamics had initially developed this robot as an autonomous inspection and data collection machine, but soon it was discovered that it could also be programmed to bust some moves. To celebrate this acquisition, Hyundai is collaborating with the K-pop sensation BTS and has released a couple of videos regarding that. One video shows multiple spot robots dancing to one of the band's song, while the other shows the band celebrating with Hyundai and a short dance-off between spot and the band. In the video, it seems that the robots are responding to music and other stimuli. However, in the company's blog post, the company has stated that Though it seems that way, everything was pre-programmed and the robots were simply responding to their inner synchronized clocks. Our other entry is Pepper the Robot, who has been making quite a statement at the Mendip School in Somerset. Developed through the inputs of both teachers and pupils, Pepper at the Mendip School has aided autistic pupils to broaden their interactions and friendship groups in a three-week research project. The school's management says that since Pepper has arrived, the school's environment has become more friendly, followed by a lot of dancing and jokes. Moreover, this robot is developed in such a way that the management states children interact with the robot on their own terms. Though the full results of the whole study will publish later this year, be sure to tell us about your thoughts on this. With vehicle production increasing rapidly, the major concern is the devastating environmental impacts that could occur if these were to run on traditional fuel. On the other hand, electric cars have emerged as a better, greener alternative to the traditional ones. And if these were to be powered by renewable energy, it would be a notable leap towards environmental damage control. In an article published in The Conversation, Professor Farnard from Coventry University explains how bacteria can be used to recycle precious metal from used EV batteries. This can be done through a process called bioleaching or biomining. This technique employs microbes that can oxidize metal as part of their metabolism and has its application in numerous fields. Bacteria targets and recovers the metals individually without the need for high temperatures or toxic chemicals. These purified metals constitute chemical elements and so can be recycled indefinitely into multiple supply chains. Keep in mind that currently recycling of batteries is done through a melting procedure, often in large commercial facilities which have a huge carbon footprint and rarely recover all valuable battery materials. On the contrary, bioleaching involves growing bacteria in incubators at 37 centigrade, often using carbon dioxide, thus has a much smaller carbon footprint than typical recycling plants. The professor states that traditional methods have been used for decades and industries can't always afford to innovate, so it is up to governments to mandate changes and invest in cleaner alternatives. Furthermore, they state that EV batteries are a technology still in its infancy. Rather than remaining an afterthought, recycling can become both the beginning and end of an EV battery's life cycle with bioleaching. A recent study published in MDPI has shed some interesting insights on the little-known relationship between cats and their owners.
the researchers created a four-part questionnaire and distributed it using online survey software. Upon reliability analysis, more than two-thirds of the items were found not to be reliable. They explained that this is expected due to the dynamic nature of our emotional responses and suggestions that the behavior of cats might also be very variable over time concerning specific events. Furthermore, the relationship that emerges from the complex interaction of the behavior of the cat and the emotional needs of the owner can be best represented by five types of relationship. First is the open relationship, which is categorized by a neutral or balanced level of emotional investment in the cat. The cats typically have access to the outdoors, relate well to other people, but also have some affiliation with the owner, but have little need for owner proximity and may be seen as aloof or independent. The second is remote association, in which the group scored negatively on the cat's acceptance of others and slightly negatively on the owner's emotional investment. Thus, there are no strong signs of affiliation or use of the owner as a secure base. The third is casual relationship, in which the cat is sociable and accepting of others but has the least need for owner proximity. Such casual relationships typically occur in busy households. Fourth is codependent which appears to typically occur in a one-person household with a cat that does not have access to the outdoors. The cat and owner will often play together and the owner is likely to stay with the cat whilst the cat is eating. Fifth is friendship, which occurs more often in houses with more than one cat. And despite having a friendly and warm relationship, the cat and owner can function independently. Such cats like to be near the owner but do not feel a need to maintain physical proximity to the owner. Though the findings are interesting, the researchers state that the study was limited by participants' demographics and cannot represent the wider cat-owning demographic or other types of relationships. However, the study provides a solid foundation for future work based on the emotional complexity of cat-owner relationships. Tell us in the comments about your relationship with your cat.